What's good, man? Jay Rocks, Rocks, man. So I'm really excited, man, to have my guest here on the show today. Um, she was referred to me by my good man, Elliot P., man, who I tan at, uh, at the Battle of Texas, man. So I got a really good bond with him. And he hit me up a couple of weeks ago. He was like, hey, man, got this amazing talent. Once you check her out, bring her on the show, let her tell her story. I'm like, well, shit, man, she wrote what you showed with me. Let's get it, baby. And that is none other than Sydney Clark. Sydney Clark in the building, man. Now, what's your IG before we even get started so people know how to follow you out the gate? Sid with it. Sid with it. Spell it, please. S Y D D W I D D. For those of you who can't spell, <laughs> there you go. And we'll be sure to include it in the video, man. But I want to get that out of the way because her, her Instagram was amazing. She got an amazing story to tell. I'm really glad she's here, man. So, first of all, just I'm glad to have you here. Welcome, man. Welcome, welcome. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Looking forward to talking to you. Absolutely, man. Let's get straight to it, man. So, how you doing for real? What's what's going on in your life right now that you didn't expect? Uh, how's everything going with you right now? Is it good? Or? Everything's great. We are transitioning to a prep, so yeah. I'm excited. I feel like I'm my best self during prep. Yeah. So, this is exciting, for sure. And then we're making the switch to figure, so... That's something I'm really excited about, too. Okay, now, for those of you who don't know about bodybuilding and the different divisions, you started off as wellness. wellness. So explain, explain to my viewers what wellness is and the difference between wellness and figure. What, how does that, what's, what does that look like? Um, so wellness? wellness is a little less muscle than figure, and it's more focused on the lower body and glutes, big yeah. legs, things like that, smaller upper body. Yeah. If you go up to figure, it's a little bit more muscle. Um, Big shoulders, wide back. Okay. Like okay. that, more symmetry. Okay. And you've done how many shows? Two. You've done two? I've done two. Okay. All right. And you've done both of those as wellness? Yes. Okay. Now, this decision to switch over from wellness to figure, is this something that you came up on your own? Is a coach you're working with or just... Um, so my coach, Sebastian, um, and then my friend, Sam. Okay. So Sam is a figure pro in the IFBB. She's actually transitioning to wellness. Okay. They're... The closest people to me yeah. and um for me i already knew my physique was more figure but i was kind of trying to work into the wellness okay. category and after how we did it at nationals and the feedback we got i just wanted to capitalize on my strengths which are my upper body my back my shoulders um instead of just trying to completely be lower body dominant okay I okay guess. all right so that, that leads me into my next question because you told me about yourself already, so I'm going to lead you right into this. And this is your your origins as being an athlete, right? Mm -hmm. And obviously that comes from Hooper. You was dunking like Michael Jordan and shit. And, something like and that. And all that, right? All that, right? <laughs> you got it, right? But no. So explain how you know your origin as an athlete and how it transitioned over from basketball into bodybuilding. Yes. Um, okay. So my dad was an athlete. My dad was a power lifter, a bodybuilder, but he did play for the Dallas Cowboys. Okay, that's what's so up. He was Cowboys fan, player. yes sir. He was a football player, um, and then started me in sports young. Okay. I started playing ball when I was five. Oh, you um, was five, okay. I was five, playing with the boys. Okay. All, only girl, all boys team, and then I played up. Wow. So yeah, you know. Skills, that's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, yeah, so I played basketball from 5 to 20, 24. Okay, so you're a long-time hooper. Yes. You played point two life. three. Like, I was a combo guard. You was so the one and the two. Okay. Were you naturally a two or naturally a one? Uh, naturally a two. Naturally a two. Naturally okay. a two. Okay. Had to yeah, yeah. transition over to the one a bit more. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, more general. Yeah. A lot of people can play that combo role, you know what I'm saying? I, I was I played basketball in high school and middle school. I was never that good. I knew my limitations. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I, I watch it from afar, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's that's why I know about the one and the two. That's what's up, man. Okay, so doing that, you were hooping and hooping. what hooping happened? Hooping was my life. Yeah. Uh college basketball scholarship. What college? Did all that. So I went to the College of Southern Idaho, which is okay. a national JUCO in Idaho. What was in Idaho, by the way? A lot of potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of potatoes. A lot of potatoes. <laughs> a lot of potatoes. It was cold. Nothing really there. Yeah. Um, but great school. Yeah. They're always nationally ranked. That's what's up. So okay. decided to go there. Uh, after that, I went to Eastern New Mexico University. Okay. Played there for a year and then transferred to Dickinson State, which was in North Dakota. So you went from Idaho, North Dakota. You went to all the states that really don't nobody go. Yeah, nobody goes. <laughs> nobody there. Nobody's there. Nope. Mm -hmm. Nobody's there. Was, Nothing's probably there. Reason for that. Yeah, and it's cold. Yeah, well, you know, I don't do cold. <laughs> <laughs> Man, brutal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you ended up in North Dakota, and you were a hooper. Mm -hmm. And what happened? 
a lot of basketball injuries. So throughout college, uh, knee, partially torn Achilles, oh, um, surgery on both feet. Wow. I just kept getting hurt. Okay. So I would come back from it, but it's like it's tall. And I was oh, just yeah. Like, mental, not, mental too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very, very, very mental, yes. Um, so then from there, just kind of decided to give it up. Pandemic was going on. Okay, this is right around pandemic time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Kind of fell into the depression, not knowing who I was without basketball. I did. Identity crisis. Identity crisis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same thing. Same that was kind of young to have an identity crisis. I mean, it, it can happen at any age, but <laughs> you were what? Uh, twenty four. Yeah. Twenty four, and yes and no because for me, I just that's all I knew. That's who I was. Yeah. So when it's, you're no longer a basketball player, oh, well, I didn't yeah. figure anything else about myself that I liked. Right, All my right. time went to hooping. Right, right. So, okay. you know, fell okay. into that. And then just one day was like, well, I've been wanting to bodybuild. I knew I was going to mm-hmm. bodybuild when I was three years old. Like, yeah. I wanted to do it, but I was playing basketball. Okay. So finally, once that was over, it was kind of like, okay, let's, let's hop into this. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so the first show you did... Um, what was the hardest part to you? Was it going through the prep? Was it the diet? Was it the, the jitters? You know, peak week? You know, how was, how was that whole process going? Because obviously, you, you know, I deal with stress mm-hmm. and, and, you know, with the hooping and traveling and, and, you know, doing what you have to do with that. That being an athlete from hooping, did that help you going through the prep phase and get ready for the show? All the time. Yeah, yeah. All the time. Um, so playing basketball at a high level, like there's a lot, it's very demanding. Right. right that's it's what I'm saying. very, very yeah, demanding. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like I already had a good amount of discipline yeah. and a good amount of, okay, you don't want to do it, but you got to do it. So right. get it done. Right. Um, yeah, I feel like that really worked in my favor as far as prep goes. But the hardest part with prep was, I think the mental toll that it takes on you. Because so, for me, it wasn't the working out. I've always been an athlete. You've always been always an athlete. Out. Right. Eating clean, that wasn't hard. It was just, I don't know, like the body dysmorphia through it. It was, I don't know, your mood jumping here and there. Like <laughs> Being hungry. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's, it's funny. That's one of the first things I noticed when I started getting involved. I never competed, but I was always doing things behind the scenes with and, I, and that's one thing I know is exactly the things you said, the, the body dysmorphia, like, do I look right? Is something wrong? Is my posing off? You know, mm-hmm. I don't like the way my, my bicep looks compared to the left. You know, I, I was like, wow. And I'll just sit back and listen to him. Like, I never I never thought that you guys would think like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because from the outside looking in, you know, I remember a lot of people don't really, you know, if you, only people that are really in the sport, body, they understand, understand those things, it. right? Yeah. But people on the outside looking in, if they see you walking down the street, they're like, oh, man, this looks amazing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, just wow! How'd you get like that? You a bodybuilder? Like yeah, but they they don't get what goes on behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not at all. Yeah, and that's what's crazy. You would think that bodybuilders are the most confident people, yeah. and we're really not. You're and we're not. really not at You're all. Not. I learned that <laughs> fast, fast. And I was telling him, I was telling Ellie, my guy, the story. You know, because I do tanning. We do tanning for competitors. Right. And you know, you would have these. You would see these physiques anywhere else. You're like, well, these guys are. They're like Greek goddesses, you know what I'm saying? These women look like just beauty queens. And when I get when we get there and tan them, they would complain. They would be not happy with us. I'm like, you look amazing. Yeah. You know? It's insane. It's insane. It's insane. And it was it was, a, it was a culture shock for me. You know what I'm saying? And, mm-hmm. and that's why I really um and we can talk about the mental mental health now. And that's where I really feel like people who are passionate about that topic, you know, they should share what they feel. You know what I'm saying? So I know yeah. you you really it's it's in your Instagram handle that you're a mental health advocate. So talk a little bit about that, how you got involved with that, why that's important to you, especially now with the bodybuilding stuff. That's a deep question. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know, for me, I just feel like I've had a lot of things thrown at me throughout my life. A lot of unexpected things, a lot of twists and turns, like a lot of knockdowns. So I've been through the stages of depression. I've been through being completely alone. When I have, like, I could be in a room full of people and still feel completely completely isolated to myself. And I remember how that made me feel, and I don't want anybody else to ever feel that way. Yeah. Um, Because it's tough. It's really, really tough. So I'm just big on communicating, like, feelings, emotions, things like that. Right, right, right. You gotta let your feelings be known and, and, and let people know it's okay to share their feelings. A lot of people 
they'll keep it all within themselves, and it doesn't that doesn't do you any good when you do those things. You know what I'm saying? So basically, you're gonna you're gonna break down, and someone's gonna give. Right. You're not meant to have those things inside of you like that all the time. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's another reason I wanted to have people come on the show and tell their story. You right. know, people who've been through that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. What is the most rewarding part for you about helping people or training people or whatever? And then what is it anything that you don't like about it? Um, so I like being able to help people be comfortable with themselves. Yeah. Like I know a lot of us struggle with body image issues, things Absolutely. like that. Right. And to be able to help somebody else with knowledge that I've gained yeah. from years, um, it's super rewarding to just see that somebody feels better about themselves, yeah. has, has more confidence, things like that. Yeah, right. So if, if, if somebody came to you, right, and they asked you what's the hardest part about getting on a, on a training program, what are you going to tell them and what advice are you going to give them? The advice would be stay consistent. Be as consistent as you can. Um, nobody's perfect at the start of anything at all. Right. Like any competitor, any person that's really even tried to diet will tell you like, it's tough and not every day is the same day. Yeah. But those days add up and that'll get you closer to your goal for sure. It just, it doesn't happen overnight. Right, 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 right. That's what's up, man. So uh, I'm real big on that and, and I try to get people to real like, and, and, and let me ask your let me ask your opinion on this. Do you feel like the harsh part is the diet? Do you think it's 70, 30%, 30% diet, 30% training? Do you think it's 50, 50? What's the hardest part you think? I think it's 80, 20. 80, 20. And it's 80% diet, 20% training. Yeah. At least for me, like the training's not the tough part. Yeah. It's, it's the food. It's yeah. the, that's what you have to be accountable for. Really. Yeah. That's the more important part. That's what's going to show the changes. And you know, it's, it's, it, it makes it hard. We're in Dallas. Mm -hmm. It's like food everywhere. <laughs> like good food everywhere. Really good food. Like the, the cows are right over there. If you eat red meat, the cows are right over there <laughs> in, 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 in the pasture, baby. And and that's one thing I know about when people come to visit me in Dallas. Um, they're like, bro, the, everything here is just good. The food is just, it just tastes fresh. Like burgers, yeah. steaks. It's like it's really fresh. Really good food. You know what I'm saying? Like really good food. So to speak to, to, to your point, is it's very hard for people to stay consistent with their diets that they're not mm -hmm. mentally strong, you know what I'm saying? Right. And for me, when I design my clients' meal plan, I try to design the meal plan based on the foods that they like. And mm -hmm. if you do that, yes. it'll give them a better chance to stay consistent. Definitely, right? 100%. You know? So, and I, I like to, you know, as a trainer or a coach, you have to adjust to your client. Sometimes you gotta be Definitely. cool and just kind of check on them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you gotta be a hard ass. Like, mm -hmm. what are you doing? Where are my check-ins? Yeah. What are you eating? Put the cookie down. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Definitely. All that. You know what I'm saying? So you can't coach everybody the same yeah, way. Yeah. Right, right. And some people are just uncoachable. They're just not they're not motivated. They don't want to stick with it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, definitely. Definitely have those so, things. Um so yeah, so and then sometimes I like to take people to bodybuilding shows to get them get them motivated. Oh, for sure. That'll yeah. motivate someone real quick. Oh, real quick. Real quick. Real quick. Real quick. You know what I'm saying? They'll see all those beautiful bodies, like, bro, I want to be like that. Mm -hmm. No, well, that's what it takes. Right. That's, that's what you did to get there. <laughs> that's what you did to get there. Mm -hmm. and, and so, go back to the shows. Um, you know, when you compete, mm -hmm. the, the people have, did that help you with people coming up to you to ask you to train them? You know, to look and, and did that? How, how did how did how did your first show go after that with people trying to work with you and do things? Um, like that? Definitely leading up to my first show, I'd say like six weeks out, and then right after my first show, um, definitely. I was in shape. I was super lean, so it made everybody kind of want to be like, "How'd you get there?" Yeah. And it was. I felt like it was just. It gave people the opportunity to be to be more open because I was like showing that bodybuilding is me. This is what I do. Right. So then it's like, okay, like there's no second guessing if I train. <laughs> so do you think that uh, bodybuilders, are particularly women, right, um, when they compete in the sport? Do you think that it's easier for them to come back after having a child to compete? Or do you think once they have a kid, they should kind of back off? Or how, what are your thoughts on that? The thing that's crazy is most of these women in the IFBB are moms. Yes. A ton of them they are, are moms. And you wouldn't, you, you would wouldn't never guess. It. You would never, never guess. So, I mean, it's just, I feel like it comes down to if you're able to manage your time. Yeah. Really, that's because physically, that that's the beauty of bodybuilding. You can literally you shift your body. your body into yeah. whatever you want it to be. Yeah. It really yeah. just comes down to that time because it's a very time consuming sport. Right, right. So on a typical day for you, for your since we're talking about time and how much time it takes, what does a typical day look like? What time do you get up? You know, what's your breakfast? You know, how how does your routine you know when you float? Um so for me, 
I need my time in the morning. Like I really need my time to myself. I get up in the morning and I prep all my food for the day. So I eat six times a day. Right. And I'm gone till eight o'clock at night. Okay. So four. What time do you get up? Like four thirty. Okay. Okay. So I get up at like four thirty. Get up, make my meals, listen to my podcast. Okay. So what podcast do you listen to? Um, what so do you listen I to listen right now? To Michael Todd. So um, every sermon that he does, like on Sundays yeah, and yeah, stuff, yeah. I just that's how I start. That's my how morning. you touch your morning. Yeah, yeah. wrong with that. So I have that playing, cooking my food, getting ready, head up to the gym, go do my hour of cardio, okay. sauna, shower, go to work, <laughs> working all day, get off. Um, during prep, then it would be cardio after work. Yeah, two cardio, two days. <sighs> two hours of cardio. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but usually cardio, get back cardio, home. Cardio, no. Man, <laughs> usually get back home around nine o'clock. Get ready for the next day. Okay, that's what it is. So six times a day. Mm-hmm. Um, what is your what is your normal nutrition look like? How does it break that down for us a little bit? Um, right now, a lot of egg whites. A lot of egg whites. We're cutting now, so my carbs are really low. Not fun. So oats, white rice, a lot of ground turkey. Get a little bit of steak, so that's nice. There you go. But yeah, just. Five base things, and that's it. Yeah, that's pretty much that's the staple macros, right? Mm-hmm. So, for those of you who don't know, I want you to touch on this. Um, when you're low on carbs, that means that you are low on glucose, and everything is you're you're slow. Yes. So you have what's called prep brain, or you you're, you're, you're kind of it's, oh, it's rough. So explain that a little bit. What that feels like, people who don't know. I know what looks. I see it. I forget everything. You can tell me something, and I'm gonna forget it once it leaves your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Have to write everything down. Yep. I will literally walk into a room and forget why I'm in there. Wow. I sleep all the time. Oh, at work? Oh, break? Get an hour break? Oh, I'm asleep. I got a blanket. I'm knocking out. See you guys in an hour. <laughs> wow. Yes. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sleep. So Just slow, lethargic. That's why, like, a lot of people, it's funny, because a lot of people see a super in-shape bodybuilder, and we're lifting, like, 10 pounds. And they're like... We're close to show, low on carbs. Like I cannot lift what I lifted off season. No, not even close. Yeah, not happening. Yeah. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. So, uh, so so let's let's talk a little bit more about that. So, tell people about what 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 typically happens in off season versus when you're, you know, getting ready to prep. What what happens in off season? And what's the purpose of that? Off season is to gain muscle, put on size. You eat a lot more. You get a lot more carbs. Um, you're a lot stronger. Um, cardio is going to be a little bit lower. Personally, I hate off-season. Why? Oh, I hate off-season. You're very uncomfortable. You are very uncomfortable because you got to such a level of leanness that your brain is literally telling you that's what you're supposed to look like. I didn't think about that. Are you serious? Yeah. So I think I'm supposed to look like that all the time. That goes to the mental. I got it. I got it. So then, oh, these smalls is fitting a little tight. Oh, okay. So my abs are kind of going away. The lines are going away. And then it's like, oh, my clothes don't fit. Wow. That part is tough. That part is tough. That's why I kind of cut my off season a little bit short this time because it was just, I put on a lot of size really, really fast. Yeah. A lot faster than I expected. So I was like, yeah, coach, we gotta, <laughs> you gotta I'm not trying to go above this way. We don't, we don't have to chip away. Like, <laughs> So how do you train differently from being on prep to being um, so off season? Off season, less reps, a lot more heavy weight, a lot of heavy weight. Um, in prep, you're just really, like bodies are made in off season. That's really, really what it is. We just accumul- accumulate the fat. So prep, you're just having to do a ton of just, cardio, just like done a car- yeah. ton of cardio, lower the carbs, pretty much just sculpt what you've been working in off season. So yeah, the di- difference is really just the food. Just the food. Food is a huge, huge, huge part. And I, and, and this is a question I like to ask all my my uh, people who come on the show who we'll learn how to deal with failure because we all deal with failure, right? And do you learn from it? Do you keep it moving? How does that go for you? So the question is, is how is a failure? or an apparent failure uh, set you up for later success? Like a scenario? Yeah, a scenario like or yeah, something like that that's happened to you. I would say the biggest one was the basketball yeah. thing. Like basketball being done, being over. Um, because for me, I feel like it brought me to what my true passion actually is, which is bodybuilding. Bodybuilding, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, so for me, it was, I loved basketball, but then when I really dove in deep with the bodybuilding, I was like, no, this is what I'm meant to do. Yeah. Like, this is what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's funny how things like that work out. You you have your mindset on something, but then the path that you end up going on is the path that you were supposed to be on. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So look at you now, right? So let's, let's, keep, to keep, let's keep that going with the bodybuilding. So... So now you're you're you you're, you stop hooping. You're you're in the gym. You know. So what made you decide to go ahead and say I'm going to hop on the stage for my first show? Did you? How did that? How did that play out when that transition from the basketball to bodybuilding and fitness? How, um, how did that work out? So how the out? thing was, my dad and I had a lot of conversations. Okay. And he always knew I wanted to do it, and it was just kind of like, okay, well, this is done. You have nothing holding you back now. Yeah. So it's. Just jump into it. Just do it. And then for me, I had just started working at LA Fitness okay. out here okay. in Texas. And it was a couple of my members. I had a few members oh. that were... So it was two couples, and they both competed. And every time I'd walk by and like, have a conversation with them, I'm like, dude, I want to do it. And they're like, dude, just do it. Yes. And I watched them go through it. They're like, you just have to do it. Yeah, yeah. And then I did, and then now we're here. What do you feel like um, people misunderstand about you the most? Um, my intensity. And why do you say that? I feel like I'm a very intense person about things I'm passionate, passionate about, about, what I care about. Um, and a lot of times it can come off as aggressive. And I feel like it's always been like that. Okay. From, from so give me an example. Age. Uh, when I get fired up in a basketball game, something like that, I'd be on the court... And then it's, it's really like any type of basketball game. You see a dude, uh, and one gets hyped, gets yeah, yeah, yeah. amped up. But <laughs> <laughs> on the contrary, like making a mistake, I was kind of very visual with it. And it was just because I expected a lot out of myself with basketball. So it was like expecting to be perfect. Yeah, so yeah. then it comes off as like, dude, she has an attitude. Like, what's her problem? <laughs> and it's like, no, I just. I have high expectations yes. for myself. Yes. Right, right, right. Now, is it hard for you when you have high expectations for yourself when you don't meet that goal? Does that does that is that hard for you to accept that, or you just take it as a learning lesson and, and keep it moving and, and go? It's really hard for me yeah. to accept. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. really hard for me to accept. And a big thing with that is just like I don't celebrate the small wins as much as I should, and I'm learning that. And it's yeah. like you have to because you're always going to be wanting to to be better. You know, so if you're never celebrating the small stuff, you're never going to be celebrating it. Right, right, right. That's that's a good point, and, and that's a very good point. And so uh, I'm like that as well. I've set very high expectations for myself, and I really go hard. But I, I found that what, one of the things that helped me is I have a I have a, a, a organizer or a daily chart of things that I want to accomplish. Right, and it's, it's a nice little it's a nice little template that I made up. And so I plan out my week. I do check marks about the day wins, losses, things I need to look at. And when I when I look at it throughout the week, I'm like, wow, I'm I'm actually I'm on track. I'm on track, right? right? And then I look at I look at it every Sunday. I wake up in the morning, I look at what I did for the week, and I have check marks. And I'm like, wow, I did a lot. And I congratulate myself. Right. And I look at, but I look at those things, but I also look more at the failures. So what did I get done? Why did I get that done? Mm-hmm. You know, what can I have done to make better? Do I need to bring somebody on that's smarter than me and this, you know, things like that. And I found that that really has helped me to deal with what I'm asking. Like, how do you deal with when you set high expectations and you don't? don't get those in place or you don't pass them what can you do to, to how does that you know affect you and how, how can you deal with that and i found that, that that's kind of what helped me out yeah that's definitely helpful i've yeah. seen a lot of people do that and a lot of people speak highly of that yeah. um and i think it's a really good way to one stay accountable but two really remember all the things that you're doing because i feel like most of the time we just forget yeah you so do. it's like so many things happen throughout the day, so I'm just, I'm forgetting about all the good stuff. I'm focusing on all the negative. All the negative. How did I, and yeah. I'm way further than I was right. three months ago, six right. months ago. Right. Things like right. that. Right. And it's, it's funny how things like that work out because when I get into that mind frame, something, I'll see something across my Instagram feed or I'll see something in the news and it makes me realize how blessed I am and how, how far I've come because you, you can look and see somebody that's way behind you mm-hmm. and you're like, wow. And it humbles you right quick. Like, wow. Oh, definitely. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I've really come a long way. I've got a long way to go, but look at how far I've come. Right. Now, i got to use that. i got to go back and help people who are way in the back, who really are trying to get to where I'm at. And that's why I talk about the mental health, the inspiration. All those things can go back. Because you never know, like, you never know who's watching you. You never know one thing you say or one thing you do or 
you just can a gesture or something that can really affect somebody. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and again, I don't want to keep, I don't want to jump around, but Elliot, you know, my guy Elliot, you know what I'm saying? When he, I started, I watched him elevate and grow, and I started seeing people affect. He, what he's doing is affecting people. Okay. I see it in his feed. Yeah. So I'm saying, so you never know. One thing you say, one thing you do, can impact somebody. Can impact somebody's life. It's very powerful. powerful. You know what I'm saying? And so I always try to be. Uh, aware of that and try to kind of keep that in focus and motivate people to go be great. That's why if, if you if you all follow me, I'll say go be great today. Go be great. There's greatness in you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's not the problem. People don't tell people that they're great. Mm-hmm. Nobody tells you you're great. We're all comparing. We're all comparing. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to live your life comparing to somebody else's. That's not your life. That's not. It's not your life, man. You're supposed to live your life. And if you if you live your life on somebody else, you're going to be lost. Oh, definitely. You're never you're going never to gonna reach full potential at all. At all. Uh, thank you so much for coming to the show. It's, it's, I've learned a lot. I'm like, wow, I didn't know so many things about bodybuilding, man. And I've been around a long time. So you never, never take a book by the cover. You can always learn something from anybody, man. So on that note, I want to be, again, thank you for coming out. What's your Instagram so people know how to follow you? So it's Sid with it. Sid Witt, spell it. S Y D D W I D D I T. There you go. Sid Witt, like sick with it. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. But Sid Witt, you know what I'm talking but about? I appreciate so. you. I appreciate you talking to me. It's been great. A lot of insight from you, too. Yeah, yeah. You learn a lot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, I, I, I like having interesting people on the show who, who bring perspective and, and context, right? Mm-hmm. And um, sometimes it takes, it takes some people a little bit relaxed. It's just a conversation, just me and you chopping it up, oh, for sure. and, and and you you gave it up. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to y'all for coming on. It's not going to be the last time you're going to be on the show. You're going to come back probably in a couple of months as you're going through prep. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you have some more like, some some more hilarious stories. What's going oh, on? Already know. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And and, uh, <laughs> and what show are you thinking about doing this year for those who are interested? What are you thinking about? So I'm doing Universe, which okay. is going to be a national in show. Jersey. Right. Um, yeah, that one's in Jersey the end of June. Okay. I might do a show two weeks before, which is out here in Dallas. Okay. So the middle of June. Mm-hmm. Might do that one. We're still figuring it out. But for sure, 18 weeks out from New Jersey Nationals. That's what's up. So she's going to keep you posted. I'm going to keep you posted. She's already in my heart, Max. She loves boxing. She's yeah. like my Rocky Four poster yeah. out there where I'm at. So she'll get some boxing. <laughs> and get some cardio, man. We're going to mix it up here a lot on the feet, man. But on that note, we out, man. J-Rock's boxing in. Sit with it. We out. See you later. Yes, sir. Bye.